Last time, we charted the timelines and lore of Chrono Trigger, a game which literally has the player going from the prehistoric age to the end of time. And while I hope my video helped people in understanding the complex storyline, you better be ready to take it to another level. Let's not beat around the bush here. Chrono Cross's plot is bonkers. It's been described as needlessly complex and convoluted, and most importantly, people fail to see it as a sequel to Chrono Trigger. However, I'm here to tell you that Chrono Cross most definitely is a sequel to Trigger, and while it may not directly reference the events of that game as much as people would want, the plot and timeline relies directly on the events that Chrono and Gang took part in. If you haven't seen my timeline summary of Chrono Trigger, click here now. As I stated in the previous video, this video is intended for people who have played and finished both games. This is especially true for Cross, as I'm going to be explaining the events from an analytical and timeline perspective, as opposed to through the eyes of the main character. I will try and keep it easy to understand for those who may not have played Cross, but want to understand the story. Alright then, let's begin. At the end of Chrono Trigger, Lavos was defeated by Chrono and his friends. As a result of this, the ruined future that we saw in 2300 AD was made a dead timeline, and therefore doesn't exist anymore. So an interesting question arises. When Lavos awakened in the Ocean Palace in 12,000 BC, he sent the three Gurus and Janus to different time periods. Specifically, he sent Balthazar to 2300 AD. So where did he end up? He actually still went to 2300 AD, except instead of arriving in a post-apocalyptic world, he was met with a futuristic metropolis, filled with thriving humans and technological marvels. Robo also ended up here when he used a time gate at the end of Chrono Trigger. Balthazar begins helping in the construction of a time research facility, which will later be known as Chronopolis, in an area of the El Nido archipelago known as the Sea of Eden. Yeah, lots of names and terms in this video. Initially, he installs Robo to look over this facility, dubbed the Prometheus Circuit. However, later it is decided to upgrade the system by installing a supercomputer based on the Mother Brain system. This supercomputer is known as Fate. This research facility makes use of the Frozen Flame, you know that piece of Lavos that broke off from him, to produce time experiments. During this construction, Balthazar observed something that would alter the course of history. He saw that Shala had been bound to Lavos after the incident at the Ocean Palace, and was becoming the Time Devourer or Dream Devourer from the previous video. Once Lavos was defeated, he was sent to the darkness beyond time, where he found Shala. Eventually, the Time Devourer will grow so powerful that it will wipe out all of space-time. Balthazar decided it was up to him to save Shala and the multiverse. He plans an incredibly elaborate scheme that would hopefully do this, which he names Project Kid. Why was this called Project Kid? Remember at the end of Chrono Trigger, Luca finds a baby with Shala's pendant in the forest? This baby is actually a clone of Shala that she created before her will was totally consumed, as she was aware of Balthazar's plan. Balthazar knew of the baby thanks to his time experiments, and planned to use this baby, named Kid, in his plan. We'll come back to Kid later. I'm not going to divulge the full details of Project Kid just yet, rather we'll address them as we go through the timeline. Balthazar decides to secretly reinstall the Prometheus circuit to the Fate system overseeing Chronopolis. Its function was simple. Fate made regular use of the Frozen Flame, but the Prometheus circuit had the ability to lock out Fate from using the flame should someone come in contact with it, dubbed the Arbiter. After this, Balthazar creates the Neo Epoch, not dissimilar to the original Epoch. Before departing to the 11th century to oversee his master plan being carried out, he sets in motion another experiment dubbed the Counter Time Experiment, which seeks to master all of time. He leaves this in the care of the Chronopolis staff before departing. So Balthasar leaves, the experiment keeps going, and in 2400 AD it reaches its final stages. This result went drastically wrong and caused what is called the Time Crash. The experiment left Chronopolis exposed to temporal shenanigans, more specifically to Lavos before he died. So when Lavos awakens in the Ocean Palace, he sees this vulnerability, and as a result, pulls the entire facility of Chronopolis back into the past, to 12,000 BC. This act creates a new timeline, one in which the events of Chrono Trigger still take place, but with some added complications. So now, 
Chronopolis exists in the same era when Zeal was destroyed, in the Sea of Eden. Because of this drastic anomaly appearing in antiquity, the planet must counterbalance it in a sense, by pulling back something from another timeline. This is where the Reptite timeline I described in the last video comes in. The city of Dinopolis gets brought back to antiquity from the Reptite timeline to this new timeline. What results is a war between the staff of Chronopolis and the Dragonians of Dinopolis, which Chronopolis wins with the aid of Fate. Fate then divides the Dragon God into six lesser dragons and engineers elements based off the dragons. These elements are not unlike using magic, but it's important to give a distinction between the two. Fate begins terraforming the El Nido archipelago into a paradise of sorts. The computer's plan is now to populate this land with Chronopolis inhabitants, while also making them unable to access the rest of the world, in case they mess with the events that would eventually lead to Chronopolis' creation. Basically, Fate didn't want anyone messing with what Chrono and Gang were doing. As a result, these men and women had their brains washed, and began their lives as simple islanders, while Chronopolis was sealed off by Fate. One thing to note is that while the Dragonians lost the war against Chronopolis, they weren't totally wiped out. Confused yet? It's about to get a whole lot worse. So history proceeds as normal for thousands of years, mainly thanks to fate. In 920 AD, settlers from Xenan, the, the continent where Agardia is located in Chrono Trigger, come to El Nido and colonize the islands. The last of the Dragonians die off, leaving behind artifacts like the Dragon Tear and structures like Fort Dragonia. The Acacia Dragoons are established as self-proclaimed defenders of El Nido, with their headquarters being Viper Manor. Many of the characters in Chrono Cross are born in the periods between 950 and 1000 AD, where Chrono Trigger takes place. So now we get a bit grim. In this timeline, the city-state of Por in Xenan becomes a military power and begins a bloody campaign. What's interesting about this is that it is alleged that Dalton, the former Zeal commander from Chrono Trigger, traveled to this time and instigated this military campaign. This was confirmed in the Nintendo DS version of the game. In 1000 AD, the events of Chrono take place and are resolved. Luca finds the baby kid in a forest and takes her in. She also sets up an orphanage and starts researching time eggs to achieve instant time travel. About five years after Chrono Trigger ends, Kor invades the Kingdom of Guardia and conquers it. It is implied by the ending cutscene on the PlayStation version of Chrono Trigger that Chrono and Marl are killed in this invasion. So yeah, they save the future only to be rewarded with death. Kinda dark. It is also possible that they survived, or maybe travelled through time, but there has been no evidence to suggest this. In 1003 AD, a boy named Surge is born, who will act as the main character of our story. Living in the docile village of Arnie, when Surge is just three years old, he gets attacked by a panther demon and becomes fatally wounded. Desperate to save his son, Surge's father Wazuki and his friend Miguel set out to sea to find help to heal Surge. Initially, they aimed for Marbule Village, a village inhabited by demi-humans. While out at sea, Shala, still stuck at the darkness beyond time, heard Surge's crying from across the dimensions and time itself. She causes a magnetic storm that blows the ship off course and into the Sea of Eden, where Chronopolis has stood all these years. The magnetism seems to shut down the defense system of the city somehow, leaving it open to the travelers. Finding the frozen flame inside, it makes contact with Surge, healing his wounds. This action unknowingly makes Surge the flame's arbiter. This means that fate has now been locked out of access to the frozen flame, a huge development in our story. Surge and his father escape Chronopolis before the defences come back online, but Miguel gets captured by Fate and stays a prisoner of Chronopolis. Fate also begins corrupting Wazuki due to his exposure to the flame. The six dragons that comprise the Dragon God become aware of the new weakness in Fate's system and see it as an opportunity to seize the frozen flame for Dinopolis. They create an artificial dragon named Harl to accomplish this. Fate is super pissed about being locked out of the frozen flame, so, using the corrupted Wazuki, Fate has Surge's father drown him to release the lock on the flame. In 1010 AD, he succeeds in doing this. Surge dies, and Wazuki becomes fully corrupted. He returns to Chronopolis, where he is transformed into a feline being, and is renamed Lynx. So, how is there a game, then, if the main character is dead? 
Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. This timeline continues, and in 1015 AD, Fate finds out about Luca and Kid. Believing Luca can remove the Prometheus circuit due to her knowledge of Robo, it sends Lynx to Luca's orphanage. Refusing Lynx's request, he burns down the orphanage, killing many children in the process, and presumably Luca as well. Kid survives, however, and swears revenge on Lynx. We can assume that Kid was contacted by Belfazar sometime after this. Remember, he transported back to this time to oversee Project Kid. As part of the plan, Belthazar instructs Kid to travel back in time and save Surge before Wazuki drowns him. She does this, Surge is saved, and that's bad. This creates a new dimension existing at the same time of the original one. The original timeline in which Surge dies is known as Another World, while the one in which Surge lives is called Homeworld. In Homeworld, as a result of Surge surviving, the universe where Chrono doesn't defeat Lavos comes back into existence. As such, Chronopolis never ends up getting built, and the Sea of Eden becomes the Dead Sea, a temporal wasteland full of broken timeline debris. Why does Surge surviving bring back the Day of Lavos in 1999 AD? There have been many theories on this subject, which we'll discuss in the next video. Suffice to say, Homeworld is essentially doomed. But Surge is alive! Yay! Fate no longer has control over El Nido in this timeline, so Miguel is instructed to guard the frozen flame in the Dead Sea. Also, thanks to Fate not being able to control events, Poor invades El Nido and takes over much of its territories. Fate also moves the Massa Moon to the entrance of the Dead Sea to prevent people from going inside. And here is where the game begins. What? <laughs> like I said, it's a complicated game, so have a rewatch through this if you've missed something, and failing that, Look on Chrono Compendium for articles describing the events described. Let's now look through the events of the game, bearing in mind that I won't be addressing every little detail in the interest of video length. Surge slips into another world one day while talking to his friend Lena, and meets Kid. Surge wants to know why there are two alternate dimensions, and why he can slip between them. He joins Kid in searching for the Frozen Flame, as it may give them the answers they need. They infiltrate Viper Manor after hearing that Lynx has been meeting with General Viper there, here they meet Belthazar in the library, though he remains cryptic as he is observing his plan being carried out. They confront Lynx, but Kid gets poisoned by a dart. Kid recovers and their search takes them to Fort Dragonia. Here, through the use of a Dragonian artifact called the Dragon Tear, Lynx switches bodies with Surge. He does this as switching bodies means that Lynx, and therefore Fate, would regain access to the Frozen Flame, as they possess the Arbiter's body and can bypass the Prometheus Circuit. Lynx, as Surge, then stabs Kid as the real Surge watches. A shard of the Dragon Tear would later be retrieved by the party. Surge, now in Lynx's body, gets sent to the Temporal Vortex, a place between dimensions, not unlike the end of time. Haro meets Surge here and helps him escape, as helping him could yield access to the Frozen Flame. Back in Homeworld, he finds that he can't shift back into another world, so instead he decides to travel to the Dead Sea after finding out about the dimensional split ten years ago. At the center of the Dead Sea, they meet Miguel, who explains to Surge that him surviving dooms the planet. Before Surge can obtain Homeworld's frozen flame, fate destroys the Dead Sea. This event allows Surge to travel back to another world. Surge wants his body back, and to do this he must find another Dragon Tear. He defeats the six dragons that comprise the Dragon God, some in Homeworld and a few in another world, and collects their relics, which allows him to retrieve the Dragon Tear from Homeworld. The party confronts Lynx in Surge's body in Homeworld's Fort Dragonia, and Surge uses the Dragon Tear to regain his true body. This tear also shatters and leaves behind a shard, the Tear of Hate. Surge now has the Tear of Hate and the Tear of Love from another world's Dragon Tear. Surge and the party are now able to head to another world's Chronopolis and bypass the security system. Inside the Sea of Eden, they enter the research facility and come face to face with Fate itself. Fate monologues on how it wants to use the Frozen Flame to give itself true life, and attacks the party. The party defeats Fate, and Fate's stranglehold on El Nido is released, which prompts the dragons straight into action. Harl nabs the Frozen Flame before Surge can touch it, and the dragons fuse back into the legendary Dragon God. At the same time, Dinopolis rises from the ocean and becomes Terra Tower. Kid falls into a coma. Surge finds and cleanses the corrupt Masa Moon, and uses its bright light to wake Kid up from her nightmare, reliving the events of Luca's orphanage being burnt down. 
Surge and the gang travel to Terra Tower with the help of a little lady in front, and confront the Dragon God in an epic battle with even more epic music. The gang escapes from the tower, and the fate of the Frozen Flame is left a mystery. So what was it all for then? Belthazar reveals to Surge that everything that had transpired was a direct result of his plans for Project Kid. Project Kid's ultimate goal was to empower Surge with the ability to transcend dimensions to the darkness beyond time and free Shala from the clutches of the Time Devourer. Using the tears of hate and love from both Dragon Tears, Surge obtains the Chrono Cross, the fabled seventh element, which has the power to unify the dimensions and save Shala once and for all. Like a master puppeteer, everyone played the part Belthazar assigned to them. Surge enters the darkness beyond time and confronts the Time Devourer and sees Shala still in custody. Using the Chrono Cross, Shala is finally freed and the dimensions are unified once and for all. The conclusion to Chrono Cross is a bit ambiguous. Surge is apparently alive in this restored timeline being returned there by Shala, however he remembers nothing of his adventures. Shala and Kid fuse back into one being, and from there on little is known. The ending credits depict a person similar to Shala exploring a modern metropolitan city, with the message apparently being that she is looking for us, the player. Maybe we are at the cusp of a dimensional split, maybe Shala is still out there waiting to be saved in our world. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my video on Chrono Cross. I know it must have been a bit much, so I encourage you to explore the Chrono Cross lore on your own time, as it's one of the most richly detailed plots in gaming history. Also, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video around, especially considering that in my next video, we'll be exploring popular theories and concepts in the Chrono universe. Until then, thanks for watching, and see you around.